All I wanted was less mosquitoes, and I got this. <laughs> What's up everybody, Ed the Pond Professor here. We are with Luke the MI Gardener in his backyard. The pond renovation is complete and this really is what started it all. When you contacted us, you want to get rid of mosquitoes. You had an existing pond, it was not functioning and it's because the pumping and filtration system wasn't working. So that's where everything started but from there it just kind of exploded. And we said, yeah. you know what, if we're coming out we're going to do some of this. Let's do the a whole facelift because this has been in for 15 plus years, so it's time to kind of redo some of these things. It all starts with this. The old skimmer was our big grande skimmer. This is much cleaner, much simpler. We actually have a fine filter pad inside of here that we just installed to help pull out some of the sediment that's inside of the water. The importance of this, just to recap some of these things, you can see all the little bubbles. I mean, that's just the perfect thing to look at. So any floating debris that falls inside of this pond, leaves, lawn clippings, windblown stuff, anything that falls in here, and you can see these bubbles starting way at the other end and they're making their way all the way to here because we have a complete closed system. Yep. So we have the suction on one side, the discharge on the other. It's just a big giant loop. It really pulls all that stuff in. This is gonna help keep that maintenance low for you. Mm -hmm. So I know that was a big thing for you and your wife. You wanna have low, low maintenance. Yep. You don't wanna be fighting things. For sure, as much <laughs> as possible, yeah. Low maintenance plants, low maintenance pond. So what we've done is we've reconfigured things, we've changed up, we kind of stayed with the same shape here but this system right here much more efficient debris falls in comes in we could easily remove it this is going to stop that eutrophication process which when we ripped it out i don't even know how many a foot of sediment down <laughs> at the bottom probably more than that even i mean <laughs> it's it crazy thick sediment and plants and all that stuff and it all starts with this so this is the most important thing so if you're on a budget if you're thinking or designing a water feature definitely invest in this unit alone and you could always add the other things on in the future but this is kind of the heart of the system this is really really critical and then from here it goes all the way up to the biological filter but what i want to do is kind of walk around the perimeter talk about a few of my other favorite yeah. spots let's go check it out yeah. this is one of those other units that we put on to make it low maintenance. So this is the automatic dosing system. We have set it for the estimated amount of gallons inside of the system. So we have this little bag down inside of here. So you could change this bag out. There's a tube that goes inside and there's a little pumping system that just micro doses. So this is like an IV type of a system, constantly dripping in beneficial bacteria and enzymes. I like that. Very simple, <laughs> very, very simple. Very simple. I can do that. Yeah, so you change that out in about four to six weeks. Yep. Check that bag, I left you with extras. You basically unscrew it, put the new one on, and this little tube is gonna feed it right inside of there. And I think that's the important thing. We wanna drip that material in right at the point of the pump. Now it's gonna get circulated for us so we don't even smart. have to think about it yeah exactly very smart low maintenance so some of the pieces that we reused here I love that big flat slab so that was part of the old waterfall yeah. but I think here it works perfect look at I mean the color of that matches perfectly with the brick yeah and it's also a nice destination where you can walk up to the edge you can see the fish you're right in between some of these areas with water lilies and you're adjacent to that waterfall so I think it turned out great yeah no I love I absolutely love this and it's just because it was repurposed from the old waterfall it it becomes just part of the new pond and it's kind of a story piece too which is cool completely agree a few other things that we did here was all the different plants that we pulled out again they were way overgrown just because of a lack of maintenance over those years but we wanted to save some of them so we actually cut up some of the water lilies repotted them in an aquatic plant soil mixture and we placed two of them in and what we did was we placed them strategically so you can see the first one's already kind of popping up over here it's right in front of that beautiful pink stone pink granite that came out from the corner of the yeah. garden over here it yep. worked out perfect the idea with that is we have that fast moving water kind of coming in off of that waterfall and then we have that slower area in front of that large pink stone so that's really increasing that circulation around it so it's those little details that make all the difference and then i'm a huge fan uh, for all the, those of you who follow me you know i love working with pieces of driftwood and logs and things like that it's just that little bit of a natural accent that works very well inside of an aquatic ecosystem the surface is where it becomes very important so when we have a lot of gravel inside we have a lot of boulders we have some different types of aquatic plants all those surfaces are home to different types of microorganisms they have unique symbiotic relationships things that grow on top of rock are called epilithic so that means they literally grow on the surface of a stone things that can that are going to grow on top of a, a log or a plant are, is known as paraphyton so again there's different species and when we start to blend all these different things together it increases the biodiversity 
And when we're talking about ecosystems, the more biodiverse it is, the more stable it becomes, and then you get better results. So I think those things, they look well, but they actually have an important function. Let's go check out that waterfall. A waterfall is one of those critical components of a successful water feature, and it's kind of that signature item that all water feature builders kind of, kind of specialize in. Everybody has their unique take on it. I love doing naturalistic things. I love the little logs. I like heavy flow. You can see, actually, you mentioned something to me that not many people actually notice. You caught this little back eddy over here. Yeah, I love, I, that's one of my favorite <laughs> things. I really like the back eddy. I don't know, because it, it it changes the texture a little bit. Like the, the flow goes this way, but the bubbles go that way, you know, kind of just, it adds interest. I really like that. It does, and only a fisherman is gonna pick up on that stuff because <laughs> that's exactly where you're gonna, that's what you're looking for when you're in a natural stream system. But that's what I love doing. I love going out in nature. I love looking at all natural water features, waterfalls, streams, marshes, wetlands, coastal areas, and things like that. The areas where the water meets the land. It's incredibly biodiverse. It's always different, and you could learn so much. Yeah. So what I do, in my mind, I like to deconstruct them. I like to see how things are actually layered. What the substrate is is it bedrock is it sand is it different sediments and then you start layering it all back and see what type of plants are grown there what type of water flow we have and then the different types of trees and things that are found around it that's where i spend my time nature is the greatest teacher ever yeah uh, we could learn so much by just replicating what we see out in the wilderness. From a functional standpoint, as well as aesthetic, heavy water flow coming in into deep pockets and pools of water, and you could just see all those bubbles being generated. That's filling, that's infusing the water with dissolved oxygen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when we start talking about a, a healthy ecosystem, which you've heard me talk about a thousand times, dissolved oxygen is key, having the right flow going through the system. But I have a systematic way that I look at all my projects. It makes it easy, and it allows me to focus more on the artistry. So yeah. I like having some of that infrastructure taken care of. Everything in this is a dream come true. I absolutely been a pleasure. And I learned so much just even sponging information from you. So it's well, been awesome. Likewise. And that's what this channel is about. I love teaching. I love sharing different stories, how we learn about aquatic ecosystems as well as ecosystems in general, because by doing that, it makes us better stewards for the earth. And that's what it's all about. We absolutely love our aquascape pond. It has been so amazing to come out here without the mosquitoes, eat a nice meal, and look at these amazing sights, hear the amazing sounds, and also one amazing benefit is that the frogs came back. The frogs have inhabited the pond, you hear them at night, and it's the most beautiful sound ever. Um, we're also at the point now, since the pond is cleared up and stabilized, that we're thinking about adding fish, and we actually are gonna be adding a yellow perch, which is an edible fish that's going to allow us to not only grow fish for consumption, but also grow food aquaponically using the fish waste. So it's a super cool kind of closed loop system and I'm really excited about it. So thank you guys so much. This has been an absolutely amazing gift.